Hey there folks, we are now ready to download and install Sham. Before we do that, however, we are going to need to install a text editor. Now, your Mac probably came with some basic text editor. That's not going to cut it though. We need preferably Sublime, but I think Atom, A-T-O-M, I think that will also work for what we're going to need it for. Basically, in a, in a few minutes, once we've installed Champ, we're going to need to edit one of the configuration files, and a plain text editor will not let you do it. It has permission issues, and it won't let you do it. But Sublime Text will allow it. I know that for sure, and I think Adam will also let you do it for sure. So to install Champ, just open up your web browser. I'm going to open up Chrome here in my applications. And then if you, in Chrome or where, whatever browser you're using, type in download champ. And then click on this go to download button right here. Now, this is the Mac install. So there's a little tricky thing you have to be careful of here. So if you scroll down, notice you'll see that there are two sets here. There's a 7.2.26. And there's another 72.26. There's a 7313, 7313, 741, 741. There's a huge difference between these two. Be very careful here. In the future, when you go to this site, those versions may be different, but the concept I'm going to show you is important. If you look at the highest version of this top three and you hover over it, look on the bottom left of your screen down there. Right here, I'm going to move my cursor back and you'll see it appear again, but look right in this area right now. And you can see that it just says installer.dmg. That's the one you do want. If I come down here to this one and look at it, it says installer-vm, as in virtual machine. Avoid this one like the plague. It is a nightmare to set up. Just ignore it get away from it. The one we want is this one right here the highest version, whatever that happens to be at the time of you looking at this video. So click on that. Once it's done downloading, all you got to do is just click on it right there. This little window will pop up for you. Just click on that icon right there. Double click on it. And that's the installer. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to open this from the internet? Yeah, the answer is yes. Open it. And now everything along the way with installing Champ, it's going to ask you for your password like a dozen times. That's just part of the deal and it's the password that you use to log into your Mac. So I'm gonna go ahead and do mine real quick. Once you've entered your password, just go ahead and close the this little thing right here and go ahead and close your browser down and close anything you got in the background just to get the distractions out of the way and just start nexting your way through this. And just the defaults are gonna be fine, next. And this tells you it's gonna install it in the applications section of, of your system click next and then click next and leave that checked and now it's going to open up a web page that tells you about bitnami just close that click next and let that install it'll take a minute once it's done which will take a few minutes go ahead and click finish go ahead and close this web browser in the background here and this is what we are interested in this is our control panel right here First thing we need to do is manage the servers. So if we click on that tab, and we want to make sure that both Apache and MySQL are running. Now, this video is for both my 1550 students and my 2440 students. So whether you're in the database class or the PHP class, or you're just somebody who wants to use databases on their local machine or use PHP on their local machine, you need to do this for both scenarios. So Make sure Apache is green and, and then MySQL, you just click on it and click the start button right here and that will activate the database there. Once both services are running, then we need to change the password. We need to make sure we can actually get into the database first of all, but then we need to change the password so that it's a teeny bit more secure. We're going to give it a pretty weak password. So here's how we do all that. Go back to the welcome page and then click on go to applications. This opens up this page in the web browser. And if you click on PHP, my admin, 
this logs you directly into the databases. You're actually connected now to the databases. Now, there are no real databases in here. We're going to install those in, in the next video for my 1550 students. For the 2440 students, you'll be creating your own databases later. But right now, th there is the MySQL database. Stay out of there. There's this test database. There's the PHP admin database. Stay out of there too, right? What we're going to do is change the password that allows us to connect it to our database. So click on user accounts right here. Then go down to the very bottom one that says root localhost, not PMA localhost, but root localhost right here at the bottom, all the way over here and put edit privileges. Then go up to change password. And right here, you're going to put a new password in. Now, I want you to use a specific password. This is only on your local machine. So unless somebody's on your machine, they can't access anything, even if they know the password. But even if they did know the password, this is just fake databases that we're just using for learning purposes. So I want it to be simple. It helps me with troubleshooting later in the semester when people run into snags. I don't have to worry about what are people's passwords. They're all the same. And the password is 1550-1550, as in the name of the database course. Even my 2440 students, I want you to use 1550. 1550. Put it right here in both the spots there. Type or enter and retype. Do not click the generate button there, right? You're going to click the go button. Okay, so click go. And now, don't worry about saving that in your browser. Now you have changed the password. Once it's changed, if you actually refresh the page, you're going to get an error, which is the expected behavior because you are now trying to get into the database that requires a password and your configuration file doesn't have a password in it. So how do we change the configuration file? Well, this is where having that text editor comes in handy that I was telling you about earlier. So let's go ahead and close the browser window here and then go to Finder and open up Sublime Text or Notepad++ or Atom or whatever you got. Here we go, Sublime Text. I'm just gonna open that not going to worry about downloading anything there. Close out of there. And the next thing I want to do, let's just get Champ out of the way for a minute. And we need to go into our Finder applications, which is what we were told where Champ would be installed. And then scroll down to the Champ folder, double click on it. Then go to Champ Files, go to PHP My Admin. And then we're looking for this file right here called config.inc.php. Drag that right into Sublime Text. Now you, you can see the file. We're going to edit it. If you scroll down right here on line 31, it may be slightly different on yours. There's this thing that says CFG servers I password equals. Right there, put that password, 1550. Save it. And when you do, it's going to ask you for your password which when you try to do this with a regular text editor, it won't even let you do it. You get end up getting errors and all kinds of weird stuff. So close that out now, close this out, and we're going to go back to our control panel and go to manage servers. And now we're going to restart the services. Now you can restart them one at a time here, or you can do restart all. If you choose restart all, it's going to start up this pro FTP. That is not necessary. So, you can do that just because it's a one-click thing. It'll be faster and you'll have the service running that you don't need. Or we can just do them one at a time. So I'm going to do restart on here. And then restart on here. And once they're done, both of them turn green again. Then we're going to try to log back into the PHP My Admin. Now that they're done, go to Welcome. And go to go to Applications. And click on PHP My Admin. And now we're back in the database. So that's it. You're connected to the database, both 1550 and 2440. You're all set as far as that goes. 1550 students, you still need to install the actual databases we use for class. 2440 students, you don't need to do that, but you do need to set up your PHP portion of things. So the next video will be the one for the database class will be all about setting up the databases and then the one for the PHP class will be about setting up the PHP. I'll see you guys there.